والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه اما بعد This is the last part of the class of the Aqidah, which is the Tawheed and the types of the Tawheed. We chose to include in this class one of the part of the Aqidah, which is, you know, the Aqidah has different subjects, but one of, of this uh, subject, we, we really intended to include it in this class because of its importance. Uh, understanding the divine will and predestination. One of the questions that people always have, or not say have doubt about it, but that always making some people to think other, they have it, you know, uh, bothering them deep inside uh, their chest. Uh, other people, they don't want to think about it, and other people there, they want to run from it. And some of them, when they think about it, they will fully deviate from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whom he wants, why someone should work, should act? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already created people for her fire, and he's here, so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to be good, he'll make him good. If not, you know, why should he act if he's already he's bad that he's going to have fire? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will to guide, he'll guide, and he will, or whoever he will to lead astray, he will lead astray subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, of course, you know, speculation of the spirit, argumentation without knowledge, but someone when he comes to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to try to understand and see the limit that someone should not cross to, not burden himself with a question and with uh, analysis and with conclusion that will really uh, burden him and put him at a very uh, difficult situation and really corrupt his uh, his belief. The way of it is the knowledge. The way of it is the knowledge. To understand this. Now, to understand it, we uh, did, you know, these three steps. First, to talk about the role of the intellect in the Islamic faith. The second, to talk about the objective uh, intellectual analysis of the divine will, and then uh, to talk from uh, Aqidah uh, point of view, from an academic uh, Sharia point of view, the, the meaning of the divine will and the predestination. The role of the intellect in the Islamic faith, and we were talking about it many times, but in different way, but once a morning he'll ask himself, uh, what is the role of the intellect in the Islamic faith? It is like someone says, is a blind faith. Do not, I mean, in a way, I like to freeze your mind, your intellect. Do not ask any question, and you have to, to believe and submit. This is not the way of Islam. That's not the way of Islam. If the Islam is based on the common sense, if the Islam is based on the fitrah, the inner disposition to know, if someone has a question, that's part of the self to understand, and to understand in a way when he will accept the belief, because the only belief can be accepted in a very peaceful way, to be settled fully into the system of the being, and to be also the engine of the action and the emotion, and need to be settled in a very peaceful way. So it cannot be someone forced. If someone, for example, is threatened by a weapon to say, to accept the belief, surely he will say whatever the one who threatened him, he will uh, say. But inside he's not accepted, he will not at ease, he will not accept it, he, he's rejecting it from inside. In the other hand, if someone forced to deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but inside he's sound, he's, he's very settled and uh, he fully, certainly believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can say it with his tongue, but it will not change what he has inside. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned before, Allah will not uh, get, take him accountable on the fact that to say any wording of uh, rejection if he's forced it, as long as his heart is sound with iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the intellect the highest and the most honored position in the, in the system of the human being. When you say system of the human being, the way that being followed other than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the intellect its honor. It's honor. The intellect of the human being is between two, two ways or two realms. 
the first realm of with the seen and the second realm is the, uh, the realm of the unseen. Two dimensions. The dimension of the unseen is impossible for the intellect to analyze it, to know it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks, for example, to invite the human being to reflect, he will tell him, ma adraka. When he, for example, talking about the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he accepts willingly your intellect to submit to the way, to the communication of Allah to you. He say, I'm the one who knows, and you do not know. And you don't have the possibility to know. Al-Qari'ah, wa ma adraka ma al-Qari'ah. Al-Qari'ah, which is the day of judgment. And what makes you know what is Al-Qari'ah? You don't know. So we say, I do not know. So Ya Allah, tell me what is Al-Qari'ah. So the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come like a great gift from Allah to let you know the thing beyond your idrak. And the idrak is the farthest limit of conceiving. You can imagine things. You can think of things. But it has a limit. That limit of imagination, that limit of conceiving. Beyond it, the intellect is incapable to do anything. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He honoring us to give us what beyond that level of boundaries of conceiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one born in a situation, uh, in any time, that's in any given time, grew up, then he start to ask, who is Allah? Who is God? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقًا He started to give us an example and he dispute who is God, but he forget how he was created first. So that's how the invitation to be humble to Allah. First, think of your first creation. Think the one who born in 1900, in 1870, 90, 80, he, was, he didn't exist. The one who was born in 2014, in 2013, didn't exist. So he came to exist in time. So the one who didn't exist, when coming in time in the dispute with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To come back to our point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the mind to submit into what he do not know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the mind to excel in the field of what he know. I'll give you an example that I always give. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we can uh, get some example from the Quran to see it here. Look in Surah Al-A'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us this ayah. First, the first one that I mentioned, beyond the, what we call Al-Idraq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for example, Al-Haqqatu mal the sure reality. What makes you think what is al haq Something is beyond. In the Hadith of Qudsi, عَدَتُ لِعِبَادِ الصَّالِحِينَ مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذْنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ I have prepared for my righteous servants what no eye have seen, what no ear have ever heard, and no imagination have ever imagined. So it's beyond. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you, like a river of... Uh, of honey. What is river of honey? How can you conceive that? Min asalin musaffa. Min labanin lam yatagayyar ta'amu. Rivers of milk that never change its taste. What milk? The milk we know? 
It is a milk. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to milk to have you to bring it close to your way of conceiving, of understanding, so you know that something great that is waiting, waiting for you, inshallah. When it comes to the way of the of the known, look the ayah twenty six here. قال يا بني آدم أو son of Adam قد أنزلنا عليكم لباس يواري سوأتكم. We have bestowed on you to cover the raiment upon you to cover yourselves. قد أنزلنا عليكم لباس يواري سوأتكم وريشة. Warisha, uh, feathers to cover yourself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرِ وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خَيْرِ Now, I like the, the one of uh, the second translation. That's what I was looking for. It's not bestowed on you. Allah said, He said, in Arabic said, Send down to you. That's the right word. That's what we want to analyze here. Clothing to cover your aura, to cover you. Ask yourself, did you <coughs> ever see rain of clothes? Allah said, Send down. How Allah sent down clothes for beauty and clothing that guards uh, against evil. Here, subhanAllah, comes the role of the intellect. The whole process from the rain comes down to the ground to give the plantation, to take the plantation, to take out of it what it needed, to treat it, to get it into process, to sew it, to pour it, and to give it, to wear it, that the whole process is the intellect. Allah didn't subhanahu wa ta'ala mention it here. The food that you have in front of you, so this is one ayah, I'll go to surah, surah Abasa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> said, A24. Let man look at his food or to his food. Now you have a plate, a dish already done, you know, cooked, tasty. Before you go on to eat it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says, stop. Look at your food. How did you get it there? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the one who fed you, right? But how it came to you? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave you the origin, and then when you have the result, between the origin and the result, who acted is the human being? How they acted? They put the intellect into action to make all this. How we pull down the water, then we cleave the earth, and then we cause to grow there in the grain and grapes, etc., etc., etc. But from the rain to the earth to come out as the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had to grow, to be a plate in front of you that is the process of the intellect. That's the mind who enter. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is water in you. Like, today at every store, you know, the very high rise, they still have water. So this is, there is an intellect of a process that's being implemented to how to have the water to be in a very high position so the water can get to other stores. That's why the tank of the water, you find it in the high position. So who brought that idea? Then you see the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the just role for the intellect to excel where the field of the human being needed, where the human being they needed for their life. 
and to submit in the thing that he do not know, and this is the greatest honor. Now, when you find people, they use their intellect, they ignore the life of the human being, and they invest into the unknown. Just look to the life outer space. Invest all your money in finding life outer space. Well, this is the unknown. And if you know it, what is going to help the humankind? You see how the intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor in Islam, the intellect to be balanced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We make you to be a balanced ummah, a balanced nation. Balanced in every way, in their thinking, their emotion, their action. Balanced to be in the summit because the balanced one, he's in the highest position. In the highest position, you don't fall in any of the extreme. And the balance of the intellect to be honored, to work and excel because he's required to excel. Excellence is Islam, is is commanded by the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu said, Qala katab Allah ala kulli shay. Allah decree excellence on everything. So the Prophet sallallahu said, Qala fa'idha qataltum fa'ahsinu al-qatla. Even when you go to slaughter an animal, do it with excellence, with its etiquette and behavior and great moral. And this is the point that I want to talk about in this, in this level. So there's no such a blind faith with no knowledge in Islam. And asking a question, it comes in an imbalance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the angels, they asked him about the creation of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't object for the angel to ask him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time in the Quran said, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Bring your evidence if you are truthful. So it's not like this is the belief, believe. No, bring your evidence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gave his evidence, he said, أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Don't you see? أَفَلَا تَأْخُلُونَ Don't you conceive? أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ أَفَلَا تَأْقِلُونَ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Don't you... Be reminded, all of that is an invitation to the intellect. الَّذِينَ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Those who are contemplating in the creation of the heaven and the earth, and the result of the contemplation, with the information communicated to them beyond their, and their, their conceiving, which is the revelation, they come to the conclusion, رَبَّنَا What they said? فَقِنَا عَذَبَ مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِنًا فَقِنَا عَذَبَ النَّارِ uh, this is how the marriage, if we can say, between the excellence of the intellect in thinking and with the gift of the revelation comes for someone to know uh, exactly the truth of this life, the purpose of this life. Look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complimenting the people of understanding in toward the end of Surah Ali Imran, he said this, Inna fi khalq samawati wal ardi uh, ayah here 190 and the the heaven and the earth and the alternation of the night and the day there are signs for the men who understand there are signs of men of understanding who are these men of the understanding those who uh, they remember Allah in all the states qiyaman wa qu'udun ala junubihim wa yatafakkaruna wa yatafakkaruna and they do reflect and they do reflect in the other uh, translation he said and they contemplate the wonders of the creation in the heaven and the earth the conclusion that they come to is a conclusion based on the revelation based on their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the purpose of life they do have because I want to say what is your purpose of life people now they have true, uh, you know, sincere purpose of life to get rich. So if he look at the wonders, he look at the stars to enjoy, he's looking at the night only. But the believer who has the purpose of life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows the truth of the life, he knows the truth of this life, he comes to this conclusion, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقَتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا he said, our Lord, you have not created this in vain. Glory be to you. Save us then from this chastisement of the fire. SubhanAllah.
Save us from the doom of the fire. So it becomes a goal, a conclusion after the contemplation. You have a purpose to be shielded from the most horrible, terrified thing in the whole existence, which is the hellfire or the other. This is just to an introduction to the Islamic intellect. Now, if we we'll think of the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that there is two types of laws. There's two types of laws. That is what we call al qawa'u al-Shari'i and al qawa'u al kawa There is what we call the Shari'i law. Sharia law. And there is universal what is Sharia? And what is universal? The Sharia law is everything related to your choice. The universal law is out of your control, out of choice. Well, So Shari'i, we call it Shari'i because it comes from the Sharia. The Sharia is the constitution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way of Allah. Well, uh, we can summarize it in the, the principle of do and do not do. So the do's and the don't, do this, do not this. So you have a choice. And we know the Sharia law, every, all the action that we control, will fall in one of the uh, of this laws. First, for example, farud, which is obligation. Uh, we say mandub, which is like it, recommended, mubah, which is lawful, makru, dislike it, is makru, and haram, forbidden, prohibited. All the action of the human being is going to fall in one of this. Salat, you have to pray. Prayer after uh, salat, nafila, is recommended. Mubah, eating, walking, uh, do all what you, you know, you think is good for you, which is not haram or this, that's Mubah. Dislike it, thinks makru, don't pray after Fajr, uh, you know, of the way of the greeting, uh, behaviors, things someone should not do. Haram are the forbidden things. So all the, our choices, is going to be part of this. All this, all this, is in a, a record. Kitab, that everyone will have, inshallah, in the Day of Judgment. So this is the choice. The universal part, We call it universal because it's part of the control. Sickness. <coughs> Sorry about uh, the pen. Sickness, um, accident, uh, calamities, catastrophe, etc. All this. Now we want to take an example. For example, 
for example, a big difficulty or calamities befall on, on a certain society. Example, earthquake. In an earthquake, there's a lot of people they die. Children, babies, old people, women, uh, I mean, destruction, devastation of homes, of businesses. And someone will ask, everybody will turn, why Allah? And we want to analyze it. And if you have any question, please do. And don't keep anything uh, inside. We, inshallah, will discuss everything. So people say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Why this thing happen? Why? Say, on innocent kids died. Died. I mean, are you going to accuse Allah? I said, no, I didn't say that. Bad. I said in the second part here, look, in the second point, objective intellectual analysis of the divine will. Say, okay, if you take an earthquake, for example, the example of the earthquake, Someone, let's say, okay, let's say, thinking of uh, many people's way of thinking, there's injustice. Seeing many people died and everything, it's not right. Says, okay, it's not right. Go with you. Tight. My next question, we say, do you believe in Allah? Believer? He said, yes. Do you believe that Allah is merciful? Yes or no? Yes. yes. But what happened in the earthquake doesn't fit. I would say yes. Okay. Don't have to answer. <laughs> you you got to be scared. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all just? Yes or no? Yes. yes. But I was talking about injustice here. So I have a problem here. So I'm going to solve the problem. It's always easy in Islam. So who's the one who's, who's, who's making the opinion here? Who's the one who's judging? It's my intellect. It's my mind. Taib, I'm going to put it here. So the mind, he saw an injustice. I will say, but Allah is merciful. Then this injustice cannot be from Allah. My mind say, Allah is the all just because this is my belief. But my mind say there's an injustice. But it cannot, can be from Allah. It's impossible. Why? Because it's going to conflict with the inner attribute of God, which make it to collapse the whole belief and then... It's either God doesn't exist, which is means someone is fully astray, or there's a thing. What is the thing? So here, when we think in a very objective way, who should I accuse? Allah or my intellect? <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the whole perfect, all complete, the whole merciful. But I acknowledge, as a Muslim who are being humble, all of you, MashaAllah, that our intellect is limited or not. Yes. That's what we said in the beginning, right? So Allah honored us to excel in the thing that we know, but in the field that we do not know, it will be honor for us to submit to Allah. Because if we do not submit to Allah, we're causing ourselves to go astray. Because we don't have the capability or the possibility to know. It's impossible. And always say the example, if you remember, he said, if someone wants to think and analyze what is behind this wall, no one will guess it. 
and the someone will go see with his eyes. Right? Mm -hmm. So if it's incapable for us to know what is behind or, you know, this room, how can someone will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the real one to accuse is the mind. In science, how many colors we cannot see? Colors we cannot see. So we have like segment of color we can see. So we are very limited. How far can we see? Very limited. How many sound was that we do not hear? They say the, this uh, technology, you know, the nose, nose constellation, huh? right? It is a nose, so it's a sound that you don't hear. It's a sound that is avoiding or annuling the sound that you hear. So the sound, for example, of engine, they said now they have a new technology of noise constellation that you don't hear the engine. So there's another sound that you don't hear who's really canceling that sound. So it's like a technology using our incapability to help us live better. You understand? So with this very limited, limited in life, limited in thinking, limited in perception, limited in conceiving, how can I argue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Being humble and honored to say, look, it's, it's us. So how the reaction of a humble intellect when he's facing this? There's an earthquake. There's a lot of people that died. But Allah is always the most merciful. He's always the all just. What I need something else to say that he is the all wise. when we are the very limited. So without knowing anything, without knowing anything, with this conclusion, I come to one point. I need to be, to hold on any analysis. To first protect my belief here, because I'm sure that he's right. Compare the greatness of Allah and with ourselves, we are the limited one. So accuse your understanding, never accuse Allah. Because we are limited. So what you're going to do in this, be patient. Submit to Allah and say, Ya yeah, Allah, help me to understand. If you do this three things, inshallah, we guarantee that you'll understand it. Be patient and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you understand. But hold on that position. Hold on that position. Don't go and scream like many people they do. Why God? Why God? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what he says to these people? Some of the ayat that I will show you. And whatever affliction, misfortune happens to you is because on the thing your hands have done. Now look at the ayah the after. With that, Allah is forgiving a lot. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have forgiven us, it will be like the end of life a long time ago. If 
you try to analyze an earthquake that happened to see in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how we should understand it. Voila. Now we said we accuse our limit of mind, right? Okay. First, we have this is the life. This turn here is either the end of law of the universe or death. So let's say call it death for all the creation or for every one of us. Well, okay. According to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the definition of life? The definition of life is, is a trial. It's not life. Is it right? Well, why? Because the true life is going to start here. I'm sorry. The true life is going to start here. True life. Now, understand that Allah created us, remember, is a principle in our mind. Allah created us for eternity, to live forever. Huh? This is nice, uh, good news, right? <laughs> Allah created us to live forever. So everyone that he had the feeling he want to live longer, it is a valid wish that is going to be implemented, that you're going to live it, but not now. It's going to be in the true life. So the true life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the life of the hereafter is the life. i give you some example in the Quran, because we want to be always close to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look in Surah uh, Al-Fajr. Here, when everyone will see her fire in the day of judgment, in A23, and hell is made to appear on that day, on that day shall man be mindful, and he say, he will say to himself, يقول, يتذكر الإنسان وأن له الذكر يقول يا ليتني قدمت لحياتي he should say would I had that I had sent before for my life you see they put between parentheses this life to help the one understand but in the Arabic there is no قدمت لحياتي I wish I had prepared for my life so ask this person in the Day of Judgment to say, uh, which life are you talking about? So what is called life is the present and the future. Past is not life anymore. So in the Day of Judgment, the true life that he's going to live at that time and what is coming. So here, the first thing to understand, the purpose and the meaning of life, the definition of the life that we live in is a tribe. It's a very short life. It's a tribe. The true life is out. This line of death that we have here is the term of everyone. Every one of us has one term. When you get to this term, that's it. Now, death equal end of term. Death equal end of term.
which is mean it doesn't have nothing to do with the cause of death. Are you following? Death in the end of term. Nothing to do with the cause of death. At the end of term, someone was walking, he fell dead. Someone was sick, the doctor, they say, oh, he's improving, he died. Why? Because the end of term. A plane crash, everyone died except one. They say a miracle. No, his term not yet. Didn't come yet. A story, someone painting like a very high building. And he slipped, he fell. When he fell, and this is a true story, when he fell, subhanAllah, there's at that moment a big track full with mattresses passing. He fell on the back of the track on the mattresses. He jumped out of the track so happy. A taxi driver came, hit him, and he killed him. When he fell, the term is not yet up. When he get on the street and jumping that Allah saved him, the, the car come to, to give him, you know, to be the cause of the death that it comes with the end of the trip. If you come back to the other example of the earthquake, everyone who died in the earthquake is, was going to die anyway. Everyone who died in the earthquake, he was to go on to die anyway. Because that was the end of the term, it's not the earthquake who killed them. Wow. So if someone, for example, at that town, before one <coughs> night he left, he missed the earthquake, but the term, his term was to end at that time, he would have died even far from the earthquake. Why? Because the term of death came. The term, he finished his term. And we say when the term, someone has a term, and the term, why we say nothing has to do with the cause of death? Because term means end of provision. So if someone will live more, he will not have any bite to eat. That's it. He ate everything he's been provided to him. He will not find any air to breathe because the air given to him or decreed to him to breathe, it came to his end. end. Well. So the end of the term is the end of life of this person from the sustenance being decreed to him. That's why people, they say, subhanAllah, he was walking and he died. He died because everything stopped. What being providing to him to give him a life, it come to end at, at his turn, that's it. No one can help him, no one. If the whole angel that tried to bring him one, one extra breathing or extra air to breathe, it will not be possible. Understanding this, so the earthquake is not the one who causing death. So in this world, we try to understand more and more, say, then the earthquake, it has a mission. What is was the mission of the earthquake? One was mercy, two was a reminder, three was a punishment. And we can give more and more and more to them. Some one pious person, 
He's been asking Allah for to die as a martyr. Well, he's at home and the earthquake came and when he died, the state that he died in or the cause of his death caused him to, to get the highest rank of Shahada. This is a mercy. He was, he was going to die anyway. So the cause of death caused for him a higher rank in paradise. Where? What he said? So he going to find himself in this true life in very high ranked position. So he will be like in the grave saying, Ya Allah, alhamdulillah for that great earthquake that you sent me. You understand? He said, alhamdulillah. So it will be among, you know, those who's waiting for the day of judgment. He say, and how did you die? Alhamdulillah, earthquake. It was so great. It came at the, at the moment. <coughs> Blessing. You'll be like, alhamdulillah. Everyone say, alhamdulillah. You know, Sahabi say, uh, I was from Badr. Oh, Allah, the Prophet sallallahu and you, earthquake. Allah, great. You see. Those who stayed alive, it's a reminder that everything that they think that they avoid and they protect themselves and they accumulate it can come at one time, take everything in one time. Someone who was very far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a reminder, come back. Come back to Allah. How many people in that tsunami that happened years ago? That people, it changed their life. Even they are far from Allah, it really changed their life. They said, we saw death. It gave them another perspective of life. And the fact to be given another opportunity to live, that person not only reminded, but he becomes a caller for the good to remind people. And that is mercy from Allah. But there's people who's been doing a lot of mischief and being reminded many times, insisting and insisting, and Allah put seal in their heart. The earthquake came to be a punishment to them. A punishment to them. And for those who are far from Allah and they don't want to be reminded, all their, you know, pride and happiness in what they build, Allah take it away in one second. Everything collapse. He's a punishment to them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تُعْجِبْكَ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَأَوْلَادُهُمْ Don't be distracted or think what Allah gave them as children and as, you know, a lot of money. تُعْجِبْكَ is gonna, not going to be like, you know, uh, attracted by it. Look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَلْ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ بِهَا Allah wants to punish them, to torture them with this money. Because when someone has a lot of money, he's not happy. He's thinking how to keep it, how to preserve it. Uh, he's putting all the safe, he's hiring all the type of security, he's always concerned. So he's really that money, it becomes his servant of that money. Allah is punishing him with that money. As he said it in the Quran. Now the earthquake is a reminder for the whole humankind around. And to show another evidence of the great mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every earthquake that happened, it has all these different elements, but the greatest element is to be a reminder. Because when it comes to the true earthquake, that's what is going to happen. إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا When the earth is shaken with her shaking. So the earth has, has its own shaking. That's the final one. You understand? 
You see this A? So the earth is going to shake. It's going to be the shaking of the earth itself. That's the final one. Which is mean, إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زَلْزَالَهَا If the earth will do its shaking, it's the end of the world. So all the earthquakes we see are reminded. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he said in Surah Al-Kahf here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he says. Ayah 58. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ And your Lord is forgiving, the Lord of mercy. Were he to punish them for what they earn, he would certainly have hastened the chastisement for them. So he said, Ya Allah, so all what this wily thing that happened on earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to say, this is mercy on you. It's a reminder. Don't worry about those innocent that you believe they are innocent. They are already in the mercy of Allah. They are living in the true life. لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابَ بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدُ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا But for them there is an appointed time from which they should not find the refuge. طيب we'll give you a break in sha Allah Ta'ala five minutes and we can take it. The universe depends on the righteousness of the action of the people. The well-being of the universe depends on the righteousness of the action of the people. Everything good you have is from Allah, because you are from Allah. And everything is provided to you by Allah. Someone will say like, the maker of planes and the maker of cars and the maker of homes and building. He said, okay, they made it, but how? He said, they thought it. Okay, that, that tool of thinking belongs to who? He said, belongs to Allah. Huh? You answered. So the good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The bed is from our side. Well. And this is, you see, the, the interaction between the Sharia law and the universal law. Every example that befall on us, anything that befall on us, it is, we have, we <coughs> managed that. Which has come to the this another principle. That every one of us is building his destiny. So your choice is making your destiny. Wow. The choice that you make is somehow you is defining your book. The servant, he will be deprived from sustenance because of a sin he committed. 
يحرم. Something was coming to him as a gift. That gift to stop because of a sin he did. And in the meaning of hadith of the Prophet he said, someone will see the effect of the sin in the behavior of his own family with him. And the way his means of transportation is reacting with him. So sometimes you say, you say I, I have a problem with the family. Well, if you think, think of yourself. You, you are the source of the problem. If you enter at the, your job and the, the people at work, they didn't greet you well, you say they are ignoring me today. No, you ignored yourself first. Something happened. So the destiny that you see in your future, you are the maker of this destiny. That's what we call it, you remember? We call it Al-Qadha'u Shar'i, the Shar'i law. We call it the Shar'i law. The Sharia law, the Shar'i law. So the Sharia, when you do a choice that will go on to produce the chain of action after that. The chain of things that is going to happen to you. Something is going to happen in the destiny that you cannot control. It's been distant to you a difficulty come. Huh? Difficulty called D1 coming down to you, traveling. You are driving things and the difficulty is coming to see, coming to you. It's going to happen in two days. That night, you read Quran, you listen to lectures, you, you were pondering, and then you felt khushu'a, devotion, you stood to prayer, and you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strong dua. You sent a dua, deep less, inshallah. This one will be go travel, and he go to stop the D1 difficulty. وَإِنَّ الدُّعَاءَ لَا يَرُدُّ الْقَضَى And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying قَالْ وَالدُّعَاءَ وَالْقَضَى يَتَصَارَعَانِ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَمَةِ They will be in dispute, fighting. The qadha, the difficulty won't push to come and the dua is pushing it back. To the day of judgment. Beautiful, isn't it? Make a lot of dough. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you ayah in Surah al -Rad, very beautiful ayah. Surah Al-Ra'd, Surah number 13. Allah knows everything. يعلم ما تحمل كل أنثى وما تغيض الأرحام وما تزداد وكل شيء عنده بمقدار. There's a measure with him of everything. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us this. If you want wish for a trillion dollars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is he capable to give you trillion dollars or not? Yes. yes. So if you ask, Ya Allah, give me trillion dollars, and it will not come to you, which is me. So it's good for you, right? That's, that's how you know we need to 
be very comfortable and happy. Allah had the power to give you the whole earth filled with gold. But if you ask him, he's gonna give, not going to give you. Why? Because it's not that the purpose of the happiness. It's not that. It's not there. The more money, the more problem you have. Think about it. If you have a trillion dollars and you are a very pious person, how are you going to pay this account? Where are you going to pay it to? It really make you think, you say, after analyzing, say, Ya Allah, I don't want it. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. <laughs> عالم الغيب والشهادة الكبير المتعارض نور of the unseen and the seen the great the most high. now سواء منكم من أصر القول ومن جهر به ومن هو مستخف بالليل وسالب بالنهار this is the state of every one of us. like to him among you is he who conceals his words and he who speaks them openly and he who hides himself by night and who goes forth by day. All of them, for Allah, is equal. He knows everything about everything. Then he said, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِّن بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ This is the unseen that we do not know that the most merciful is telling us what's happening around us. For he said there are angels following one another before him and behind him, who guard him by Allah's commandment. So this is not the angel that they are writing your deeds, though they are angels that protect you from the destiny. They have a book. There's an accident is going to happen in two hours. You make dua, a new destiny being described, this accident is not going to happen. Then at the moment of the accident, the angel intervene and save you. What people call miracle. It's not. It's this area. If there's nothing to hold this accident back, the angel, when it comes to the time of accident, they would draw themselves for the accident to happen. Before him and behind him, who guard him by Allah's commandment. Surely Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change their own condition. So the changing of the destiny based on the changing of your own condition which comes back to the choice that we are talking about. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, die not except on the state of Islam. Do not die, Allah has a command, except on the state of Islam. We don't know the term of death is in the hand of Allah. It's universal, right? You cannot control it. But the state of death is your choice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, yes, you don't know the term of death, but you control your state of death. So die not accept, die not accept on the state of death. Do you have any questions? I have a question. Um, it's mentioned that when we're in our work, that the angels were committed in the 40s. Yes. Among those is the risk, the sustenance. The sustenance. So then, when I come to this world, how does my obedience or disobedience change the, what the angels already wrote before I even came? More of a philosophy question. The rizq is not the sustenance of the food that you eat. The rizq is all the type of blessing that you receive. The knowledge is rizq. The good health is risk. The good understanding is risk. The obedience of the parents is risk. 
the obedience of the children to the parents to them is risk. To have people, good teacher, good guides is risk. All of that is risk. Now, if you think of a risk of a quantity, it's not what it goes into the real result. Why? Because you can have a hundred dollars that has a blessing will feed the whole family for maybe a whole week. Without a blessing that hundred dollar, you will someone will spend it in, in no time. It's gone. So what the difference between the first hundred dollar and the second hundred dollar is the blessing, the baraka. So the baraka is the result. So the disobedience will deprive someone from the rizq who help him to collect barakah, to be happy in his life, to have the peace in his life, and to achieve his goal in this life. But the quantity of water, he going to drink it all. And the quantity of air he's going to breathe, he's going to use it all. That's the key. So the disobedience will take the barakah away. Take the risk, reduce the risk, the barak of the risk. Time. Any other question? So, conclusion. If everyone is doing his own destiny, when he comes in front of Allah, Someone is going to blame himself. Who is going to blame? Himself. You don't say, oh Allah, earthquake happened. I was there, fine. And I, oh Allah, ya Allah, I want to worship me. Worship you, but the tsunami came. I didn't know that. So, you know, blame yourself. Because Allah is the all just. You had your opportunity. You have everything in your hand. All what happened to you is because of what you earn with your own hand. Okay. Next point. This is... So we have two books. Book one. And... Or the book. The book one is for every one of us. Every one of us. This is book defined based on the choice. So this book it changes all the time. Then we have the book which is what Allah called Allah al mahfuz the Savit Tablet. Allah al mahfuz What is Allah al-Mahfuz? Allah al-Mahfuz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing He created is the pen. And He commanded the pen to write everything. Everything is going to happen. 50,000 years before creation. Fifty thousand years before creation. This everything written in this book called Allah al Mahfuz also has another name, his name Ummu Al Kitab, the mother of the book.
also called as dhikr. Also called as dhikr. In Surah al -Rad, the same Surah, MashaAllah, Allah mentioned the two books together. Ayah 38 from Surah al -Rad. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجٍ وَذُرِّيًّا And certainly we sent messengers before you and gave them wives and children and it is not in the power of a messenger or prophet to bring a sign except by Allah's permission. For every term there is an appointment. For each period is a book, so the the left one is the more suited to the Arabic uh, text. For each period is a book. So there's book for every term, there's book for every choice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you what is the nature of this book. And Allah do uh, Allah makes to pass away and establishes what he pleases uh, blot out or confirm what he pleases Yamhu is to erase what you bit confirm so it depends on your choice this degree is going to be erased and degree is going to be confirmed that's the changing book that you mentioned and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ And he already has the mother of the book, the one that never changed. So, the relation between the mother of the book and the book based on the choice is at the end this book at its end, when it closes at the time of death, it will exactly equal the first book. But this is we're going to see in the next class, inshallah, to understand this part. So the way you want to end your life, Allah already knows it and been already written in the book before the creation 50,000 years. To add another principle, Inshallah <clears throat> ta'ala. You remember we said life is a test. And he is death. So whatever happened to you here, this is the thing that happened to you in your life. And here is your book. It's going to be written things. A lot of things. What is written in the book? To come back, to link everything together. What is written in the book? What it goes in your record that you're going to receive in the Day of Judgment? For some of the event here, uh, event that happened, this is disease, here an accident, here, you know, uh, we're only talking about here problem, but, but that's what the question is about because people think about that. Uh, so what it goes in the book? Will you find in the book, for example, uh, for example, this accident, 
Say someone in his book, and in this day of this uh, month, of this year, he has an accident? No. Because that happened is a test. What it goes in the book is the way you reacted at the time of the test. When someone happened to him an accident, or he lost something, how are you going to react? He's going to curse or to be grateful to Allah? He's going to be patient or he's going to be like screaming and, and cursing? That's what goes into the book. So the book will not have any of the thing that you face in your life from difficulties. It's going to have the way you reacted at the difficulty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hadith of the Prophet he said, for those, for example, who lose his kid, for example. And he said, alhamdulillah, Allah will build for him a house in paradise called Baytul Hamd, the house of Hamd, the castle of Hamd. So what we want in his record is the reaction, how he reacted towards that loss. But the kid that he lost, is he going to be with him in paradise or not? Huh? So he didn't lose his kid, because he's going to be waiting for him. But the way he reacted, he said, Alhamdulillah, for Alhamdulillah that he said, Allah built for him a castle called Baytul Hamd, the house of Hamd. Next time, inshallah ta'ala, we would like to explore the levels of the divine will and predestination. Divine will and predestination. This is the academic way to understanding how the scholars of Akita they mention. I will give them to you as we have some time, and then we do them next time. There are four. First one, al ilmu knowledge. Second one, al kitabatu writing. The third one is al mashia Will of Allah, absolute will of Allah. The fourth one is Al Khalqu, is creation. Those are the four levels that the destiny go through. Knowledge, writing, will, and creation. So subhanAllah, you see how many how many levels before to come to creation. So the, the creation in the last phase in the whole process. <clears throat> Any question? Um, about the you said you have two books and 
So if you, have, if you committed a sin and Allah forgave you for that sin because you repented sincerely, would that be on your program book or because the sin has been lifted? Would it? Uh, that will depend. There's two ways. There's that the sin will be erased fully or forgiven will be covered. The erased fully is not going to be in the record. The forgiven is going to be in the record, but Allah will erase it at the time of the meeting of the judgment. That's why there's been difference between Allahumma khillana wa Allahumma a'fu anna. Ighfir, cover. A'fu, erase. So in Ramadan, the greatest dua that the Prophet taught to Aisha, he said, he didn't say, tell her, قُلْ اِغْفِرْ اللَّهُمَ إِنِّكَ غَفُورٌ تُحِبُّ الْبَغْفِرَ فَاغْفِرْ عَنَّا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا قال اللَّهُمَ إِنَّكَ عَفُوٌ كَرِيمٌ تُحِبُّ الْعَفْوَ فَاغْفُ عَنَّا It's like, Allah erase it all from the book. We don't want to see it. That's the power of Ramadan. And remind me to conclude with uh, Allah guides to him whom he will to explain it in the end. You, and I think that you already know it. That with this level we'll come to it.